Delmarva consists of several different areas of land. You have the sandy coastline, the wet marshland, the dense forest areas, and the fertile farm fields. All of these areas are part of a fragile ecosystem, especially considering sea level rise in the mid-Atlantic region is more than double the global average with many predictions of acceleration. Now this could spell trouble on at least two fronts. The University of Maryland Eastern Shore is studying the effects of saltwater intrusion on Delmarva land. And with us this afternoon is Dr. Stephanie Stotts. She's an associate professor in UMES Departments of Natural Sciences and Agriculture, Food and Resource Science. I'm glad I didn't try to say all that with one. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Yeah, I'm glad okay. to be here. Uh, help me out. Let me start early. What is saltwater intrusion? It can take a couple different forms. So we can see um, when a hurricane comes and you have a storm surge and that washes over the land. But it can also be more subtle and difficult to see. So as the as sea level rises, you can have your groundwater table, which was fresh, starts to become salty. And you don't see that from the surface, but it has a huge impact on, on the land and what's growing there and what you can grow there. So it can take a couple different shapes and it can look different ways. And you're studying it in a couple different ways. Yes. What are they? We have great models that predict. So we have models that run, you know, if the sea level rises this much, this is where the water will be. But that really assumes that your land is static. It's not changing. And we know that that's not the case. Um, and that's the part that's not really well understood is sort of these feedbacks and how things change. And so from the science perspective, we're really studying, looking at um, the processes and the drivers and changes that are happening. Um, and then if you add human behavior into it, it's mm -hmm. a whole other element. Yeah. Um, but then we're also looking at it being an agricultural school from a more application-based perspective. So developing crops, um, being able to adapt. If, if the land becomes saltier, um, if we have different climate effects, can we grow crops that are more suited for that environment. So are you seeing impacts now? Absolutely. What, like what? Yes, um, we are seeing there are farmers who are abandoning fields um, mm. because that you can't grow stuff on them. They're, they're too salty. Yeah. We are actively seeing that. We are seeing places where forest is retreating really, really rapidly. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so tell us about how you are doing experiments or I guess research to find out how we can adapt to this. Yeah, so we have um, several studies going on. We're looking, we have um, scientists that are looking at developing varieties of crops that can handle salt or drought. Um, we're also looking at different farming practices that we can do. Um, here we have an example of two strawberry plants mm -hmm. and the bigger plant included something called biochar, which is a waste product. It's 10% biochar in the soil matter. And when we watered these, um, this is a project by Dr. Naveen Dixit, and this one is getting full water and full fertilizer. The one on the smaller to the right. One. Looking, okay, yeah. Yes, and then the larger one is actually only getting watered half, half the water, and half of the fertilizer. Yet the plant you can see is much larger and healthier, even though it's getting less water and less fertilizer. So by simply adding something into the soil there it can handle drier conditions and it can handle conditions with less nutrients. So, so that would be how ag entities would change the way they grow things or? By, that would be a different additive. So additive, you would okay. add that into the soil mm -hmm. um, or you would plant a different variety of crop that is more suited to those conditions. So how long do you think it's gonna be before the impacts that you're seeing now is gonna make us change the way we're using the land? Well, in many places, we already are changing the way we're using land, and we have been for a while. Other places that may be a little further inland, um, a little bit further, higher in elevation, it might be, you know, they may have longer, yeah. um, but that's just part of land management, and you're constantly adapting how you do things. Mm -hmm. um, and because of the amazing research that goes on, we're trying new techniques and new things all of the time. Um, so already today, yeah. if you're other places, it might be a few decades down the line. Okay. All right, so another aspect of this, of course, we talked about the forest, and you've brought mm -hmm. in some samples mm -hmm. from trees? 
Yeah, so I am, uh, I'm actually a forest ecologist and mm -hmm. I do something where I look at tree rings to look at environmental patterns. And so one of the things that we're seeing happening is that our coastal forests are dying. If you ever see, they, we call them ghost forests, they're just dead trees hanging out in a marsh. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so if we look at those tree rings, we can figure out how the salt impacted the growth of the trees, what the climate drivers are. That allows us to predict in the future. So what will happen to our forests? Do we need to replant them? Is there something that we can do? Um, will these trees become more susceptible to diseases? Um, so there's some really interesting thing. It's a little puzzle that you can unravel by looking at the, the tree rings. Um, so interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. very interesting. And we've seen one of the interesting things right now I've just been looking at is um, in some places, Hurricane Sandy actually helped some of the trees grow because there's light competition. And so um, if you had some of the trees knocked down, now they had more light and they saw well, you know, a, an increase. Now those would be areas that didn't have a lot of salt to come right. along with that. Right. But, um, yeah. So you can that? tell some really, really, really cool things by looking at those. Dr. Stephanie Stotts with UMES, thank you so thank much. You. Very interesting indeed.